Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I will be very brief. It is a privilege uh, to follow the Honourable Member for Beckingham. A very emotional speech, and can I pay tribute to him uh, in his uh, service to his country and uh, specifically in his time in Northern Ireland because he has a great yeah, reputation yeah. Yeah. and uh, we appreciate yeah, yeah. Yeah. him for all his, his help. And his comment in relation to uh, the Right Honourable Member from Lagan Valley in relation to technically he wasn't allowed to be our friend. Can I uh, enlighten the Honourable Member? We have a lot of friends <laughs> on both sides of this House. And, uh, you know, contrary to rumour, may not seem like it at times, but uh, we, do, we do have. Speak for yourself. Uh, <laughs> we do have uh, quite a number of friends. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it, it, is, uh, it is a privilege to follow uh, the Honourable Member. Can I start by saying that um, I believe that the United Kingdom's armed forces are the best in the world? They have served this nation uh, well at times of, of crisis and conflict, from the battlefields of, of Europe to Africa, to the Far East, to the two world wars, through to the Falklands of the Balkans. From Iraq to Afghanistan, their bravery and sacrifice has been demonstrated on a daily basis. And I can speak of the key role played by our armed services in defending the province of Northern Ireland against terrorism. And some of us on this side of the house and on these benches have lost family who served in the Crown Forces in Northern Ireland over the serious times of the Troubles. And I'm sure both right honourable members and members of this House will acknowledge that when it comes to the donning of the uniform of the Crown Forces, the young men and women of Northern Ireland have never been found wanting. They have served their country as members and part of the United Kingdom, and many of them, like many here on the mainland, have paid the supreme sacrifice. I will. Pay tri tribute to that. Someone told me that Irishmen have won more Victoria Crosses than Englishmen, Welshmen and Scotsmen together. I pay tribute to that. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And uh, yes, the Honourable Member is correct. And uh, I think history, the history books have, uh, have outlined that very, very well. And, and we have... Uh, I think as members and parts, uh, a part of the United Kingdom and as British citizens, I think many of our young people have paid uh, tribute. There are young men and women from my constituency currently on duty in Afghanistan and unfortunately one brave Gurkha officer from my constituency, uh, Mr Neil Turkington, lost his life uh, in the middle of last year. So we paid tribute to those families that have lost uh, loved ones. And our armed services have served this nation well. But while they have served us well, unfortunately it is not also true to say that they have not always been served well by government. There are a number of issues that I believe we need to tackle. Veterans need help whenever they return to civilian life. And I know, Mr Deputy Speaker, a number of the points that I'm going to raise has already been mentioned, but they are important, and I will be uh, very, very brief in them. As I've said, I believe that veterans, people who have served their country, need help when they return to civilian life. On the 16th of February, the Secretary of State said, it takes time to turn a civilian into a soldier. So we should take time to turn a soldier into a civilian. Our resettlement programme helps service leavers to navigate civilian life, everything from finding a job 
to benefits, education and training. Those are fine intentions, but there are issues of concern that ought to be addressed. Honourable members will be aware of the recent uh, report um, in the Yorkshire Post uh, dealing with an issue in regards to domestic violence involving ex-military personnel who have left the service but were left with no prospect of employment. It is good that the Secretary of State today has outlined the or announced the 24-hour service. I think that's commendable. And the education service or scheme. And uh, further to that, the British Legion in my own constituency have, has invited me to go to Scotland to see some of the medical facilities and the care that has been provided uh, over there uh, in that part of the United Kingdom. So I, I'm looking forward to that. The report uh, points out also that the MOD's full resettlement program isn't open to all personnel. So perhaps whenever the uh, Secretary of State is responding or whatever, we could find some more information into that. It also pointed out that very often the type of work people are trained in isn't the type of work actually available. And secondly, we need to look at the assistance that can be given to a veteran who has had problems of readjustment or found themselves out of work or in financial hardship. And I think the point that the Honourable Member for North Antrim raised in relation to housing is a point in case and I think that's a very valid point and I think should be taken um, a lot further. The idea that people can lay their life on the line on our behalf only to find that when they're in trouble there is nowhere for them to turn. That is totally unacceptable. But we also need the Prime Minister. And we get to the thorny issue here. We also need the Prime Minister to carry through on the pledge to enshrine the, mili the military covenant in law. And I know the Prime Minister didn't make that pledge lightly, but he made it on the decks of HMS Ark Royal. He could not have chosen a more symbolic place to make it if ever there was a pledge that should be kept. I believe that that is it. But the perception is, regrettably the perception is, that there seems to be a drawing back from the pledge that was given by the Prime Minister. Where we were promised that the, the covenant would be enshrined in law what we got was merely an annual report on it. So I think we need to be careful. And I've listened very carefully to the debate thus far. And I believe that we owe a debt of gratitude. And I've said this a few moments ago, a debt of gratitude to all our armed service members. And I believe we need to get this right. If there is some issues around enshrining it in law or whether there are issues that need to be addressed we need to have an open discussion on it and we need to make sure we get it right because there is nothing as 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 bad as an argument going on in this house of commons between all the parties in relation to a pledge that was given or a pledge not given or what's going to be in the covenant or what's not going to be in the covenant whenever our men and women are dying on the streets of Afghanistan and other countries it is so destroying for them to listen to our governments or our government or opposition or whatever uh, discussing this we are dealing with men and women's lives their treatment after they come home or whatever yes I will does he not agree that there would be something, and indeed there is something in Congress, in the degree of protection, for example, in law, that is given, for example, to the civil service, or to other aspects of the public sector, or indeed to the police, or to many other areas of the professional life of the kind that he's describing in terms of public service, to provide it for those people, but not for the military? Thank you. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, yes, I, I would agree with the, the Honourable Member because 
I think all should be treated equally in that. And those people that are out in other countries who are putting their lives on the line, and I'm not saying that others aren't, because police officers and others in the streets of London and elsewhere across Europe have led their lives down as well. So I think there needs to be an equality there, and there needs to be uh, that fairness right, right across the board. The, and I will finish with this, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, because I know there's uh, quite a lot of others that uh, want to get speaking. Um, the Royal British Legion um, have written to myself in relation to the whole issue of the Covenant. The Right Honourable Member from Lagan Valley raised it, and there are major concerns from the Royal British Legion in relation to this. And I would encourage the Government uh, to coordinate the whole aspect of this issue around the Covenant, uh, whereby we can um, uh, deal with our young men and women who are out serving uh, for this uh, country and uh, who are laying their lives um, on the line. We understand that there are issues around the economy and there are issues that need to be dealt with legally, perhaps within the Covenant, but we, know we owe these young men and women a great debt of gratitude and I think we need to get it right for them.